Hi, I'm Chris Haig and this is the Fiddle Channel and today we're going to look at the Doobie Brothers song Black Water. Blackwater was a request from a couple of my supporters on Patreon, Mel and David. And uh, this is a lovely song from Doobie Brothers 1974. It was their first number one single. And uh, it features the viola playing of Eileen Novog. And um, I was not aware that it was viola. I assumed that it was uh, fiddle. Uh, but it sounds very nice. Uh, she's a session player who has worked with, among others, people like Prince and Frank Zappa and Michael Jackson. So she's done pretty well for herself. Um, it features uh, a fiddle, uh, well, a viola intro and uh, a little solo in the middle and then a back and forth solo with the guitar towards the end. Uh, I'm going to show you most of the sections of this song. I'm going to show you the intro, the vocal verse and chorus, um, and then the original fiddle solo and I'll give you some ideas for improvising your own solo. So let's start off with the intro. We have a couple of uh, bars of guitar, uh, four bars in fact, and then the fiddle comes in. Um, so I'll just play you what we have for the intro. Here we go. it's into the verse. Uh, so um, in my humble opinion that's not the best uh, fiddle intro that <laughs> there ever was. Um, it doesn't tell you much about the melody that's coming or anything but um, I think a lot of people will recognize that intro so it's probably worth learning. Right then we get into the verse. Uh, so the, the vocal melody is this. That comes twice. Uh, I'll give it you now with some more fiddly additions such as drones and maybe a few little slides and things. Three, four. So that just kind of makes it more fiddly. Then we've got the chorus. third time and then a kind of a hook four times and then so that's all um, not very interesting for the fiddle so I'm going to suggest some backing parts that you might do instead of that. But it, I always think it's worth um, getting to grips with the melody itself so that you know how it all fits together. So for the first section of the verse, we've got A minus 7 going to D. And um, there's lots of different combinations of note pairs, but I would suggest an open A with an E below it for the A minor chord then add the second finger for the D chord. Uh, when we get to the chorus, this bit, we're going from G to B flat. So we could go, so we're keeping the open D going and we're putting a, D, a B natural and a B flat. And then the next line, the, for the A chord, E over C sharp, 1 over 3, and then open over 2. So let's try all of those three parts over the verse. So here's the four bars of intro before we come in. Now the fiddle part. Rhythm. I'm going to 
beautiful Now the G to B flat then it's into the fiddle solo. Okay, so there's various possibilities there. Uh, now the fiddle solo, it starts off with a sort of intro to the solo. So we got this line. Then it's into the actual solo. One, two, three, four. And that's the solo. So leaving out that first part, we have... So that's kind of based around the D major pentatonic and just get used to the fingering of that, open one, two, open one, three, three, open one, three. That's the way to really learn the pentatonic, is to just let the fingers flow as fast as they can. Let's try improvising a solo using that. First of all, really simple. Now, to a pentatonic, you can always uh, add the flattened third to make it into a major blues scale. And I do have a video all about the major blues scale, which you might find helpful. So just adding that blue note will give you a lot more expression. Let's just hear that again. Now, later on in the song, we have a, um, a solo that alternates phrases between the fiddle and guitar. And uh, much as one or two of you might want me to transcribe that solo, <laughs> I would say you're completely wasting your time doing that. Um, in the unlikely event that you have a guitarist in the band um, who is able and willing to play the, the guitar part, um, what they were doing was improvising. They were not, they had not written out a part. And the whole idea of a backwards and forwards solo is that you were listening to one another and responding. So far better to practice as much as it takes for you to be able to do that, to make up your own backwards and forwards with simple phrases that suit your playing. Far better than trying to work out exactly what they played at that moment in time. The, towards the end of the song, you, we have uh, a little riff on shortening bread. And I did a video all about shortening bread, which might be useful, but they go. Uh, 
and uh, you can have a lot of fun with this. They're singing it um, in harmony and also playing the melody. And you could go round and round this. So just learn the basic melody and then learn to mess around with that. So this is a nice song which uh, there's a lot you can do with it. Um, and the more you're able to improvise rather than just copy the original, I think the better fun you will have on this. Hope you found this useful. If you'd like a sheet a PDF of the sheet music, then do subscribe to the channel and send me an email. And if you want all of my PDFs in one go, do join me on Patreon. And that will also help to keep these videos coming. Thank you for watching. See you again soon.